Hello in game fans, the Diablo series has been a favourite of mine ever since the first game with its combination of flashy skills, slaying hordes of demons and that compelling loot treadmill so it's no surprise that many developers have sought to make their own. In a slight departure for this channel, these studios tend to be medium sized, hence not so indie, but my picks starts with Lost Ark. This Korean MMO action RPG has been on the radar for many fans of the genre, but has yet to be officially released in the Americas and Europe. Fight against a demon army by going after the leaders of the six demon legions in this absolutely beautiful game. The world appears to be a mix of fantasy and technology, with summoners, berserkers, gunners, mechs, and more all coexisting in this world. It is free to play in Korea, with Chinese and Russian versions available, so it will take some work to get to play this using VPNs, fan translations and so on, but if you want to play this now, you need to do some research. Another gorgeous ARPG is Vikings Wolves of Midgard, which obviously is based on Norse mythology. When the fire and frost giants begin to merge their armies, play as a member of the clan of the wolves, determined to seize your destiny and save the world. The world and mythology is the most interesting part where you face off against the undead and the creatures of Ragnarok while pledging allegiance to the various Norse gods. While reviews are a little mixed on this, citing nothing that really stands out, this is still a solid action RPG with nice modern visuals, loot, skills, and of course, tons of enemies to kill. I'm still pretty amazed that developer Sodak Entertainment is a player in this space, having a total staff strength of 2 according to Wikipedia. They have made a bunch of action RPGs throughout the years, with their latest release being Din's Legacy. While some of the visuals and even their official website looks like something from the early 2000s, the experience shows in the combat and systems in their titles. This game's main hook is the mutating main character where you literally evolve as you play with all the stereotypical fantasy lore of dark ox, zombie parasites, necromancer magic and more. Last year's Warhammer Chaos Bean is yet another title tapping upon the Warhammer license, which more or less is freely available, revisiting the Warhammer fantasy universe where you fight against the forces of chaos, with enemies aligned with the god of blood, change, pestilence and pleasure. While it currently sits at mixed reviews on Steam, just like Vikings, Wolves of Midgard covered above, this is also a decent action RPG that is good if you just want to slay a ton of enemies as a stress reliever. 
the developers are continuing to put out DLC, the most recent of which has you travelling to the desert to fight against the Tomb Kings and who knows, perhaps some critical changes will be made in the months after launch. One title that channel subscribers have brought up again and again is Chronicron, an impressive top-down action RPG that looks overwhelming but awesome in all the right ways. In a world where all evil has been vanquished, use the Chronicron to relive the memories of the heroes of old with four classes procedurally generated dungeons, 700 plus items, 900 plus abilities, crafting, hardcore mode, infinite character progression and endgame content. The current version includes the first 4 acts with the final one in the works but a great experience right now which should hopefully be complete soon. If you can believe it, this is the work of a solo developer having been in early access for coming to 5 years but slow and steady wins the race. The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing has quite a unique setup comprised of three individual games released in 2013, 2014, and 2015, but Final Cut combines all of these into the definitive edition. Play as the legendary Vampire Hunter and adventure in the land of Orgovia. There are monsters to kill, villagers to help, and your own ghostly companion as well. While you do play as one character, there are 6 classes to choose from with unique skill trees, a rage system, and even mini events like defending a town or daily missions. Despite being 5 years old at this point, I still think that it does look fantastic and is one of the most content rich packages out there. This one skirts the line a little since Book of Demons is a deck building action RPG with some limitations on movement, but has an interesting procedural generation engine and system as well. This follows the story of Diablo 1 to a T, having a demon residing in the dungeons below the old cathedral with a familiar village elder in town as well. Love the Papercraft art style and is one of the more unique games out there despite the superficial resemblance. Having launched in early access last year, in the months since then, Last Epoch appears to have addressed many of the issues that players have had with the title, and as a result, is shaping up to be an awesome one of these.
this has quite a standard save the world story where your main enemy is the void itself, but this has elements of time travel worked in as well. As a result, you do visit departures from your standard fantasy environments, but the core ARPG action is fantastic as expected. This has 5 base classes with 3 mastery classes each, leading to 15 in total, such as a sentinel becoming a paladin, forge guard or void knight, or an acolyte becoming a warlock, lich or necromancer. This is currently in phase 2 of 4 of their early access roadmap, but looking good and should get even better. Zakharavia, the fallen city. Whatever haunts this cursed city, I will face to find my friend. I'll admit it. I do get confused between Victor Vren ARPG and Van Helsing covered earlier since both has you playing as the badass hunter going after supernatural creatures. This replaces vampires with demons and has you specking out your version of Victor due to the massive amount of weapons, armor, demon powers and destiny cards. Great look, fun skill and another solid entry. When we talk about Diablo-like games, of course Titan Quest must be mentioned, since the original released in 2006 and was a game which I bought the physical version of all those many years ago. Instead of demons, this uses mythological creatures like hydras and satyrs with a unique class system that allows you to mix and match from 28 available. A little bit of a weird lineage as well, since the Anniversary Edition was re-released in 2016 with retweaked resolutions and quality of life improvements. Furthermore, development was handed over to another studio who made additional DLC in Ragnarok and Atlantis, released in 2017 and 2019 respectively, which is super weird but cool at the same time. Speaking of Titan Quest, the original developer, Iron Law Entertainment, shut down in 2008 but members of that team reformed as Crate Entertainment, putting out Grim Dawn in 2016. Using the same engine, this game has taken on a life of its own with multiple expansion packs that still sustain the game to this day. In a similar fashion, as of recording, there are 9 distinct base classes where you can dual class for a total of 36 variants with the usual loot, epic campaign, hundreds of items and skills, and even multiplayer support. There are MMO style factions to appease in this game as well, with story choices to make and even something known as the Devotion System, represented in-game by a constellation map that allows for bonuses and secondary effects for your characters.
another inspiring game developer story, I'm glad that this studio continues to exist and that they have found their groove with this game. Each of you has always been stubborn in your own way. Stubborn to have it your way. Stubborn to never give up. Turn back now while you still have each other. The controversial Wilson Lords of Mayhem launched earlier this year after a period in early access and once again as a beautiful looking action RPG. This has a freeform character leveling system where you assign skill points to nodes on a tree, such as that other infamous elephant in the room not yet mentioned, but awesome lore, visuals, and visceral gameplay. No, sister. We end everything this time. Reveal your true potential ascendant. Fight like you have never fought before. At launch, the servers got absolutely hammered with people trying to get in together with some severe bugs where skills did not work as intended, hence the current mixed reviews. Reform the line. Get ready. Brother, come back in one piece. Understood? It is here. Why didn't you leave when I told you to? However, I believe that this team will eventually iron out all the kings, so maybe check back again when that is done. On the other side of the coin from Warhammer Fantasy, of course, is the 40k series, so when this was first released, I was quite shocked to realise that no one has tried to make an action RPG title with the license. This comes to us from Neo Core Games, previously seen in this video with the Van Helsing game, and they took their lessons learned from making that into this title, ending up with an excellent ARPG. Play as an Inquisitor and carry out the God Emperor's will, destroying heretics and fighting corruption. There are three main classes, Crusader, Assassin and Psyker, with three further specialisations each. Crafting, tarot cards, global events, seasons, endgame content, co-op, Warzone and more flesh out this experience and in a similar vein to other titles on this list has been constantly patched with new free content so a great one to jump into. At the time, Runic Games was a nice departure from the world, comprising of former Blizzard North developers who of course worked on Diablo 2, with their best known title to date being Torchlight 2, the sequel to the dungeon delving title that mirrored Diablo 1 and 2. In hindsight, the choice for a more cartoony look was quite a clever one since despite being released in 2012, this game still looks pretty awesome so no problems going back to it. However, this developer did get bought and shut down in 2017, but the legacy of this lives on with extensive full conversion mods elongating its life. Torchlight 3 is also in the works, with a different developer but with some of the same team members, so perhaps look forward to that. Darkest riches of your mind. 
come, step into my world of twisted illusion. Witness the birth of fear. And of course, Path of Exile comes in at the number one spot. This free-to-play action RPG saw a tremendous surge in popularity around the launch of Diablo 3, where users seem to have preferred the more grimdark, gothic horror look of this as compared to the initial visual style of the other game. Being free-to-play inherently has its advantages, but the most interesting part of this is the gem system where you can customize and synergize your skills based on the gems that you slot into equipment. Add to that the now iconic freeform extensively overwhelming skill tree and you got the recipe for near infinite replayability. Monetization is somewhat friendly, focusing on character slots, cosmetics and item stashes, so certainly not pay to win. Add to that constant free content patches every 3 months and you have one of the most player friendly free to play games out there. This developer has grown quite extensively and good on them for doing so, but for providing an excellent game, well deserved and a no brainer for the number one spot. Delirium. <laughs> the gods are dead, but left on their own, men will always seek to take their place. Criminals! Your sentence is to be hanged from the neck until dead. Let your souls be the first one and your bodies feed the land. The only result is pain and death. The demon is escaping! Kill her! Get her! As an added bonus, Grinding Gear Games did announce Path of Exile 2, which is a new 7-act story campaign that will exist alongside the original, set 20 years after the events of the first. Only 20 years since Kitava fell, and already corruption spreads like a plague through the shattered land. Both campaigns will lead to the same Atlas endgame content, so it's quite a strange thing conceptually since both will remain free to play. To put it to an end. It must be done. If Rayclass is to survive. A revamped support gem system and 19 new ascendancy classes are planned as well. So it certainly seems that this team is in it for the long haul with quite a bright future for them. If you enjoyed the video, why not share it with a friend? Check out even more great indie gaming videos and in this current climate, stay safe and I will see you after the jump.